visit Jerusalem, or even if you see a picture of Jerusalem, probably the most prominent and recognizable structure is the Dome of the Rock on the Temple Mount. This Islamic shrine looks absolutely amazing. And that's not surprising since the architecture was copied from the Byzantines. The octagonal shape was copied from the Church of the Seat of Mary, which was once located just outside of Jerusalem. The dome was copied from the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. The architects deserve a lot of respect for copying the perfect collection of features to make this shrine a work of art. The rock in question is the foundation stone, sometimes called the Noble Rock. Rocks are very important in Islam. Many Jews and Muslims and Christians believe that the foundation stone was the location of the Holy of Holies in the second Jewish temple during the time of Jesus, and that it was where the Ark of the Covenant was placed in Solomon's temple. Most people don't know that there's a chamber underneath the foundation stone called the Well of Souls, which may have been an ancient hiding place for the Ark of the Covenant. Now for some history. As I mentioned, the Dome of the Rock probably stands on what used to be the site of the second Jewish temple rebuilt by Herod the Great, which was the heart of worship for Jews. Herod's temple was destroyed by the Romans in AD 70. Following the Bar Kokhba revolt in the second century, the Romans built a sanctuary for their god Jupiter on the Temple Mount. But the Romans eventually converted to Christianity. So, from the 4th century to the early 7th century, Jerusalem was controlled by the Byzantines. Jerusalem quickly became a popular religious pilgrimage site for Christians, but in 638, the city was conquered by Muhammad's companion, Caliph Umar. Several decades later, construction of the Dome of the Rock began during the Umayyad Caliphate on orders of the Caliph Abdul Malik. Now, why did Abdul Malik build the Dome of the Rock? Most Muslims are convinced that it was to honor Muhammad's night journey when the Prophet of Islam was taken to the Temple Mount on a mythical flying donkey monster named Barak. But there's no evidence that Abdul Malik built the Dome of the Rock to honor the night journey. The night journey was apparently a later legend. Lots of Muslims are convinced that Surah 17 verse 1 of the Quran refers to the night journey. The verse says, Exalted is he who took his servant, and in brackets the translators add, i.e. Prophet Muhammad, by night from al-Masjid al-Haram to al-Masjid al-Aqsa, whose surroundings we have blessed, to show him of our signs. Indeed, he is the hearing, the seeing. Notice there's nothing about a flying donkey taking Muhammad to Jerusalem. Jerusalem isn't even mentioned. Later Muslims identified al-Masjid al-Aqsa as the Temple Mount, but this verse doesn't say any of that. Indeed, the verse doesn't even mention Muhammad. That was added by translators. Watch what happens when we take out the part the translators added and we include the very next verse for context. Exalted is he who took his servant by night from al-Masjid al-Haram to al-Masjid al-Aqsa whose surroundings we have blessed to show him of our signs. Indeed, he is the hearing, the seeing. And we gave Moses the scripture and made it a guidance for the children of Israel that you not take other than me as a disposer of affairs. In context, the night journey in the Quran sounds like it's talking about Moses. God took Moses from one place to another place and gave him the scripture to guide the children of Israel. Later Muslim sources claim that this is about Muhammad's night journey, but this later legend had nothing to do with Abdul Malik building the Dome of the Rock. The Dome of the Rock was built before the story of Muhammad's night journey was invented. How do we know? Well, the Muslims who constructed the Dome of the Rock in the 7th century included inscriptions, verses of the Quran, that show what their intentions were. And the inscriptions are about Jesus. The verses are a rebuke to Christians and to Jews. The inscriptions proclaim that God has no son and no partner. That's a response to Christians. But they also proclaim that Jesus is a prophet from God. That's a response to Jews. On a side note, the Quranic inscriptions contain textual variants from the Quran Muslims read today, which means that we can also think of the Dome of the Rock as a reminder that the Quran has not been perfectly preserved. So, Abdul Malik seems to have built the Dome of the Rock as an insult to Jews and Christians rather than as a memorial to Muhammad's night journey. The night journey and Surah 17 
aren't even mentioned. But the story of the night journey became popular later in the Sira and the Hadith, and so the Dome of the Rock was retconned as Islam's third holiest site because of its connection to Muhammad's imaginary flight to Mecca and ascension to heaven. The Dome of the Rock was damaged by earthquakes in 808 and 846. The original dome collapsed in 1015 and was rebuilt several years later. In 1099, following years of persecution against Christian pilgrims and even the destruction of the Church of the Holy Sepulcher, considered by many to be Christianity's holiest site, crusaders attacked and conquered Jerusalem. They turned the Dome of the Rock into a church, and the neighboring mosque, the Al-Aqsa Mosque, soon became the headquarters for the Knights Templar. Jerusalem was reconquered by Muslims in 1187, and the Dome of the Rock was reconsecrated as a Muslim shrine. Over the centuries, the Dome of the Rock went through various renovations and restorations, including the beautiful tiles on the outside, some of which look like pictures of demons, and of course, the gold plating on the dome, which was added in the 20th century. And now, after being built and rebuilt, after changing hands repeatedly, the Dome of the Rock stands as a perfect shrine for Islam. The architecture was copied, like Muhammad copied almost everything in his religion. The location was chosen specifically because it was a holy site for other people, just like the Kaaba was once a center of pagan worship, and as the Hagia Sophia was a center of Christian worship, and as the Babri Masjid was built on what Hindus believe to be the birthplace of Ram. Islam is obsessed with controlling other people's holy sites, just as Muhammad was obsessed with controlling other people's religious figures, turning Abraham and Moses and David and Jesus into devout Muslims. Toss in a bunch of later myths and legends and embellishments and convince hundreds of millions of people that they absolutely must preserve this slap in the face to Jews and Christians everywhere, and you get the ultimate monument to everything history's most obvious false prophet came to do.